from the University of Minho uh, and I have the opportunity to, to declare open this second uh, open science fair uh, and I will give the floor to Eloy Rodrigues, the director of the documentation services of the University of Minho to start this opening session. Morning, all. It's really a, a great pleasure uh, to, to to kick off this open science uh, fair in the name of the of the program committee and the organizing committee uh, uh, that is, that has been working to, to prepare the, the the open science fair for almost one year. Uh, to to and we are delighted to have to have all of you and all of you is 400 people, so uh, more than we initially anticipated. Uh, in Porto for the for the second open science fair. Uh, after the success of the first open science fair two years ago in Athens, that set a very high uh, standard and, and expectations, we have worked hard to provide you a, 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 rich, a, a rich, enjoyable, and lively event in another historical place here at the city center of Porto and in the uh, Porto uh, Congress uh, Center. I want to take this opportunity to, to thank all uh, of you that have uh, uh, worked both in the program committee and the organizing committee and beyond them uh, uh, to the organization uh, of this uh, initiative that is promoted by Open Air and three other European projects, Fit for our Ride, EOS Secretariat and Friends Fair. I want also to give a special thanks to our sponsors. Fitchair and DPI, Springer Nature, Admire, Copernicus Publications, Frontiers, and Robert uh, Consulting for supporting us uh, uh, on uh, uh, hosting this, uh, this event. Uh, I hope you enjoy the next two and a half days. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I invite uh, uh, Professor Ioannis, Ioannidis, that is uh, the chair of Open Air and uh, also the, the director of Athena Research Center that hosted us so well two years ago in Athens to officially open uh, the Open Science Fair. Please, Yannis. de estar en esta bonita ciudad de Duporto. Bienvenidos a la segunda conferencia de OSF. Good morning. It's a great pleasure for me to be in this wonderful city of Porto. And I want to welcome you all to the second Open Science Fair uh, here for the next two, uh, two and a half days. As uh, Eloy said, this is the second after two years of uh, the first one which happened in, in Athens, in Greece. And uh, uh, as he said, the, 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 the high mark was pretty high, but I think we've managed to surpass. Uh, the crowd is amazing. Uh, it's a lot more people than, than Athens. And I'm sure the rest of the two and a half days uh, uh, will prove equally improving. And this is in the science, in the spirit of open science. Open science is, I may say, the way that the scientific endeavor is moving towards and it will continue to be uh, this way. Openness is the name of the game. Uh, the very nature of um, science is reproducibility, the ability for a scientist to repeat or introduce in whatever way, depending on the science, this takes different forms, uh, the results of someone else. And uh, until now, especially in the era of uh, uh, computing-based science, uh, this as scientists we haven't followed through, we haven't fulfilled this part uh, of our contract. But uh, with open science, we are moving towards this. Uh, we are true uh, to, to what we agreed to do. And in the past two years, a lot of things have happened in terms of open science. Now, a lot more people, a lot more scientists, a lot more uh, uh, policymakers uh, have understood 
how it will open science. The difficulty is the balances that you have to keep. But open science is the mouth of a lot more people than, than, uh, uh, than two years ago. And you can also see that also in the program, where a lot richer set of activities, a lot of richer uh, results are being presented, are being discussed. So the next two and a half days will be really, really thrilling. And not only that, also uh, in the commercial world, the publishers and others have realized and are moving towards serving open science. And, and we need all of them. All, all stakeholders have to be there. You see it also uh, around, around the room that we have representatives from all walks of life with respect to the scientific um, uh, uh, process. And the open science is, is what leads us uh, uh, to, the next, uh, to the next stage. Uh, open science, uh, I want I to talk to about things that you know, pretty much uh, know why we need open science besides the producibility, accountability, uh, 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 and so on. Uh, uh, it, it's publicly funded, therefore it has to be open to any open innovation and so on and so forth. I, I was surprised to read in the newspaper yesterday uh, you may have read in the news that two or three days ago it was announced that one of the uh, exoplanets, one of the planets outside of our solar uh, world, for the first time, there are about 4,000 that have been detected, one of them for the first time, uh, uh, water vapors have been detected. So, among all these 4,000, uh, for the first time, they might have scientists from UCL to, to figure out that there is water as vapor, so there, probably there's a good indication that there will be water in liquid form on the planet. So maybe there is life out there. And the chief scientist, in, in giving all the interviews in all the media, said, and this would not have been possible without data that is open. And open besides all the things that we talk about, is what made possible for this to be true. Yes, it's 110 light years away, and if we're to travel there, will take us 2 million years. That's, that's not a problem. But still, this major discovery in the field of astronomy was only due to having an uh, open data. So, I'm sure there are many stories, this is the most recent one is from yesterday, but that I read it. So, open science work. And let me uh, uh, finish with one more comment. This is, this is Open Science Fair. And for me, as time goes by, the first and the last letter may not be as important as the middle two. Forget the F, forget the R. And what we're left with is AI. So think of AI not in the meaning that they have in fair, but in the meaning that you all understand when you say AI. I think that the progress in this field in artificial intelligence, in text mining, in, in knowledge discovery, is so fast that making everything so accurate before we make data available, uh, manicuring, ensuring quality and so on, to the end, may be having us spend more time than we have to before we start processing the data. So we should have quality data, not garbage, we should be managing and curating our data up to a certain level. But beyond a certain point, fair is fair, but let's not forget that we can even process non-perfect data and get amazing information in it. So this open science community, together with OpenAI, uh, may make even more wonders than we think of if we only think of fear. Uh,
open science is a major thing in EOS, in the European Open Science Cloud. The Commission, the Member States are putting a lot of effort in this. It's a big element in open science, at least in the European world. We are very lucky that something will be happening there. Sometimes the O is a little bit uh, put in second priority, as opposed to the uh, European, the science and the cloud. But it's up to us, events like this and all the other stakeholders to make sure that they all, the open in the open science remains a major uh, direction of history. So, uh, I'm really excited and looking forward to the remaining two and a half days. I want to welcome you to the second West Fair Conference and enjoy the rest of the day. that alone 
new and more effective modes of knowledge dissemination will increase the visibility of our national scientific production and thus its impact and its appropriation by economy and society. In a broader perspective, talking about open science arises the issue of the objectives that we should have in mind when fostering it. And this includes the consolidation of science as a fundamental human enterprise, enterprise through widely shared research procedures and outcomes. The assurance of better conditions for establishing crucial research ethics and integrity as a major concern inside, inside scientific communities. And the promotion of accountability and transparency, making publicly, publicly visible goals, methods, and outputs of research. A strong conviction that important advantages can result from the adoption of the principles of open access led our university, MIU, to establish strong policies with mandatory guidelines for archiving and making available in open access the same production of the institution, paving the way to open science. These guidelines are embodied in the university strategic plan, which assumed free access to scientific knowledge as an area of positive differentiation of the university. We are aware that the success of these guidelines is also dependent on other complementary measures, among which continuous feedback to our research centers through a continuous updating of the results obtained have ensured that we have a presence of open access in our institutional agenda. The involvement of the university in research, development and innovation projects for open access and open science, which have been very important to support institutional policies. The existence of a qualified and specialized structure to support the implementation of policy guidelines and the promotion of participation in national and international academic events, such as in the case of this fair. Universities are nowadays facing new challenges in open access and open science. New, new areas of development are emerging, namely those related to storage, organization and access to research data. The development of open science demands various conditions that scientific systems and institutions need to handle adequately. The business models associated with open access are far from being satisfactory. A recent study by the European University Association estimated in 30 European countries a total annual expenditure on the subscription of electronic resources, and this includes periodicals, databases, and books, by national consortia of more than 1 billion euros, with an estimated 3.5 percent yearly increase. This figure does not consider article processing charges, consortia other than those participating in survey or individual institutional contracts with publishers. Therefore, this, is, this estimation is a concern. In any case, it shows the dimension of the challenge, financial, financial challenges systems and institutions are nowadays facing. E infrastructure to support open, open access and open science are largely needed. This is to a major challenge as the investments required are very significant. The development of national and institutional policies needs to be properly addressed. Actually, when considering open access in its different, in its different modalities, we are still very far from the goals that most of us consider to be quite wise. A review paper recently published by the award shows that we didn't even reach the percentage of 50% of articles in open access considering all modalities. The open access survey conducted by the European Universities Association in 2017-2018 reported that less than two-thirds of the institutions that participate in the survey have an open access policy. Thus, we still have a long way to be done. There are 
are also meaningful label issues related to sharing that we use for publications and data in the context of open access that need to be properly considered. Finally, researchers motivation and the assessment of researchers also need to be taken into account because of their effects in the researchers' commitment to the open science. I conclude by hoping that the planning sessions, workshops and debates that will take place here in these days uh, can contribute to deepening a movement that has undoubtedly relevance at the academic, institutional and wider educational
of solving complex problems. Europe needs open science to create a young, thriving and creative research environment capable of attracting the most talented people from all over the world. Europe needs open science as a cultural and enabler of collaborative partnerships to break down cultural barriers and foster a spirit of solidarity among nations, crucial at a time marked by increasing tensions between powerful global actors, precisely when humanity, faced with these complex global threats, needs cooperation the most. Portugal also needs open science, and we have taken important steps in that direction. INCO 2030, the National Initiative on Digital Competencies, embedded in its policy program a national open science strategy to be developed during this year. At the same level as it put the national strategy for artificial intelligence and the national strategy for advanced computing. FCT, the Portuguese Science and Technology Agency, provides since 2008 the National Open Access Repository Network to the entire scientific community and since 2013 the scientific journal hosting service developed to enable the transition of existing scientific journals from the print era to the digital open access environment. FCT has also included open science principles in its research evaluation process since 2017 research units and associative laboratories evaluation process and is, there is a clear intention to continue to include open science the directives on the evaluation of future calls. At the time of international, at the area of international arena, we have also taken important steps, namely with a long-standing cooperation with Brazil in open access and more recently in open science, and which we will have next month the Luso-Brazilian Open Science Conference at Manaus. We have already been actively involved in, involved in collaboration with South America as a whole, one that has brought us today to the signature of a memorandum of understanding with the network of open repositories La Referencia. Portugal works with Africa, providing assistance in setting up and maintaining repositories and repository networks in countries such as Mozambique and Cape Verde, extending open science Luso-Brazilian initiatives to these countries. Portugal can have and will have a pivotal role in the global setting of open science as a natural interface between Europe, Africa, America and also Asia, given its presence in initiatives from all these regions and its accompanying communication flows. But there are many and complex challenges ahead for the full realization of the open science vision, in particular to the open data front. Copyright issues, publishing market issues, cultural issues, awareness of capacitation of researchers, infrastructures, smooth interoperability, bibliometric valuation rather than increasing research quality are just but a few of the battles that have to be won along the way. Open science remains today, more than ever, an interfacing and an urgent and important current goal for mankind. This conference underlies Portugal, inter Portugal interfacing role, a role it wishes to play ever more actively. This conference is also a great opportunity to gather all stakeholders involved in this change to whom I would like to, like to leave a message of encouragement and support to continue to take the necessary actions together for the realization of an open science.